Welcome back to the channel. This is Ephemeris, and today I'm going to start on a couple projects. The first one is just this one that we're going to see out here, and that is this large flat area that I have drilled out. And I'm going to go ahead and try to create a little self running carrot and potato farm in this uh, area here with enough room to kind of expand it out underneath this hill right behind me. So that's the first project. Then the other project is, is I need to clean up some of the zombie sounds that I find in my base. And I ended up having to dig down and I found, I got a giant uh, ravine underneath my base. And it's actually not that big, but it's something that I had to take care of. So we're gonna go ahead and get to starting to build this little carrot and potato farm. Thanks for joining and let's get started. So to start off, I want to go ahead and start to build the structure for my new farm here. So what I started off with was just clearing out this nice flat area. And what I'm going to start with is go ahead and creating my gardening plot. And the gardening plot is gonna center around this dirt block, this will be the center of the plot. So I'm just gonna start by creating my little X around it and then haul that out so I know where the middle is. And then just extend this out four by four in all directions, which is probably a pretty simple uh, idea for those of you who've played for a while because we know that we can get the water to go ahead and hydrate up to four blocks away. And then I'll just very quickly fill this in and be able to move on with the build. One of the challenges that I had when I first did this inside was that I ended up getting the villagers to end up being able to interact and end up breeding. And then the new mob farm that I'm going to show you, we're going to try to avoid that. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and fill uh, this part in here. And then when I get done with that, I will be back. And so we're back and finally got all the dirt blocks placed. The next piece that I need to do is I need to end up placing a border around this to keep mobs out and keep my villagers safe. So I'm going to start with using some stone bricks here or excuse me stone blocks just because i like stone i like the way it looks there's no reason that you really need to use specifically stone but i like some sort of hard to destroy block simply because i will get pillagers coming through here and i will also be getting um, mobs sometimes spawning in this area still one thing i need to do because i need to be able to leave a bed for my villager that is going to be farming i am going to leave this little platform here so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this all the way in. I'll have to dig some of it out when I get done, but that's okay. So I'll build this all the way across, and then I'll worry about putting in the mechanism for collecting the uh, carrots or potatoes after I get this all set. I will also talk about lighting this up a little bit as oops, we will need to put some light sources in here just so we don't get things like zombies spawning inside this individual. Uh, farm area. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place my water source um, and then over top of that I'm going to place a trap door so that my villager can't fall into it. And this really won't matter because I'm going to put the composter and a light source over top of this uh, but I just like to have that there pretty much out of habit more than anything at this point in time. The next piece I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and figure out where I want the uh, villager to be standing. Uh, I do know that we'll have this solid wall behind them, so I'm going to probably put my villager right here. That means that I need to have a channel for my hoppers to run coming around the villager here and going like so. And then that's gonna to have to feed into some chest, which I'm gonna to have to end up putting probably down below here. And I often build down into the ground a little bit just to make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna feed these hoppers 
down into a chest down here so that I'm able to open it up from the outside nice and easy. And I'll eventually probably make a large collection room down underneath all of this as I build this up multiple layers. So we're gonna go ahead and place some hoppers here and the chest just to make sure we have everything in place. So I'll go ahead and set two chests side by side so I get a nice double chest there. I'm going to come around and place my hoppers, making sure to crouch in case, in my case, hit the shift key, make sure it runs into the back of the chest. When I built this in creative, one of the problems I had is that I actually didn't do that with one of the hoppers and it was going into a stone wall, which doesn't do a lot of good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a hopper feeding into that one. And then hopper feeding into there and then this hopper feeding this way. So it is a little bit uh, expensive in terms of hoppers, but that'll be okay. And, uh-oh, we got a problem. But we're gonna just take a quick little break here and deal with this. I'll show you how I deal with these pillagers because I don't like them so much. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna set a little trap for the one with the flag because I do not feel like right now uh, fighting an entire raid. So what we'll do is we'll just come back here and because they're so far away, they probably won't even react to me or, well, oops, don't want that guy to die. What I wanna do is I wanna see if I can't let them just go ahead, fall right into here. I'll take the hit if I have to but I'm just gonna knock him down into the hole and leave him there. These guys I'll go ahead and kill. And I think there's one more over there. Now, since I did not kill the guy with the flag, I'm not going to get the bad omens effect. And Therefore, when I go back to try to go into my base, I'm not going to trigger a raid. And I'll just leave this guy over in this hole to basically despawn at some point in time. Because I really don't feel like fighting off a whole raid at this point in time. If I had uh, nothing going on, I probably would just because my base is pretty safe from them. So now that I got my hopper set, I'm going to go ahead and fill in around this just a little bit. We will go ahead and start to create the cell for our little villager who will sit in here. I will cover up one of those, but I'm going to go ahead and reposition some hoppers here uh, because I do expect that I'm going to build this up multiple layers. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some hoppers there and then I will go ahead and build this out. Now, if you're still new to Minecraft, and this is a trick that I've definitely uh, learned from others, the way that I'm quickly selecting blocks is that if you aim at a block, whatever it may be, and you press your, in my case, my middle mouse button, and it should be pretty much the default for most people, that will automatically go into my inventory and select a matching block for that. And that's really helps speed up some of the builds. It's something that has taken me a while to get used to, and I'm still getting used to it, but it's a nice little trick just to speed things up. So we got this built out here. I need to check, do I got glass over here yet? I don't, I'm gonna run back to my storage unit. I'm in okay, so I'm back getting my glass that I was gonna need. I did forget that um, I knew to need to put one course of stone along the bottom here. I guess I got a little distracted with the uh, raid that came through and I forgot that I like to have stone just along the bottom probably not necessary you could get by with glass um, I just do this because I like the look I could do any of the different types of stone look I just like this one and then what I'll do is I'm gonna put two runs of just glass blocks here going up. I'll leave this portion completely Fill it all the way in. This is out of that way. So I will finish this up real quick and then we'll get back to talk.
Okay, so we got the glass in, we have our lower wall in. I will put a temporary roof over the top of this using stone. That stone will actually act as the bottom of the very next layer whenever I decide to build it. I do have a few things I need to kind of clean up here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a stone in there for now. And then I need to put a stone block in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and start to get this set up for our future additions. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a railroad track wrong direction. Do this without losing it. Did I get it? No, the hopper was too quick. So we are back. I got the extra rails, grabbed a whole bunch of them. And the biggest thing is I want this rail to uh, end up going this direction just so that I don't get the chance that the uh, village back here shoves the rail cart out and can get by it. So then I'll just go ahead and break this rail. Hopefully the direction stays. Replace this block and then taking and placing a hopper uh, rail cart down. And what's going to happen is that once I put a farming villager in here, that farming villager will collect all the carrots or potatoes and come over here and try to throw them over at the villager back there. And when they throw something across, it will get swap swept up by this hopper minecart. Now, one thing I do have to remember to put in here is I need an iron trap door or some sort of trap door up at the top here. I like iron just because it can't move without the redstone. And that's going to prevent that villager from being able to get across from this. When I first built this, I did not have that trap door in there. Matter of fact, I had two villagers back there and food eventually got over to them and they actually were able to come across the, the mine cart somehow and ended up being able to breed a whole lot. So, and I think, well, the other thing I might've done is I might've broken this rail, which I think was also part of my problem. So really had to clean this up. Um, over here, some kind of things that we need to finish. We are going to go ahead and put the composter down here. And then I'm going to put a piece of glowstone on top of it. I'd prefer the um, sea lanterns, but I don't have any right now. The other thing I want to do is I want to just add some lighting to this. And I'm going to go ahead and use glowstone. Uh, I don't know not everybody likes the uh, block particularly well. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and use it just because I have it. And I think it is a nice way just to light all this area up and make sure that I don't get any unwanted mobs spawning in here. And so just placing these around, trying to make it somewhat even like. Well, I'll probably mess this up. I'm not always real good at this part. And just making sure that we have some decent lighting to prevent those unwanted accidents. And then I will go ahead and put this here. And we should have everything we need to start to get this set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go and grab some carrots. Come back. We're going to plant this full of carrots. And I'm going to install a rail system to run from where I have my rails in my base up over here. And then we're going to get this all set up so that we can dump our villagers directly into this. Once I get all that set up, I will be back with you. After a little bit of work, I have gone ahead and ran a rail line out of my base, powering it up through here. And as it goes up and over this little activator rail, the villager is going to be dumped out of the minecart and down into, uh, we'll walk down into this area here and should take over nicely. Um, the farming aspects of this little farm I got going here. So one thing I need to do is I just want to power this up to make sure that the cart has enough energy after it comes up over this loop here to actually pass um, the minecart all the way there. And then I'm going to run back here real quickly and try to get a villager into the minecart. There we go. Yeah. 
And our villagers now off and running towards the his eventual new home out on the farm. And I'm going to just try to run along and see if I can't catch up to him right as he's about to go up into the farm here. So we'll see him as he goes up this hill. And if everything goes right, yep, he gets bonked out of there. He drops down and given just a little bit of time, he should switch over to the farmer profession here. Okay, so after a little more work than it should have been, I finally got both my villagers in here. I have the one that has become a farmer. Uh, when I originally brought him out here, I had to actually kill the first one because I left a dirt ramp in here, which he promptly ran out of. And then it took me a couple attempts to actually successfully get this other farm, this other villager in here because I forgot that little trapdoor at the very top. And as soon as he came into the farm, he ran out from where he's supposed to stay. So now I got this filled in. I just need to wait for these carrots to fully grow. And this farmer should go around, start picking them, and then a couple times a day go and try to toss them to the other villager over here. And when he does that, I will start to collect some carrots down below. I don't expect this farm to be extremely fast, but I am hoping that it will be enough to make it so that I don't need to manually farm carrots all the time on my own. And that's what I'm gonna hopefully get out of this. Now I will eventually build another one of these just off to the side here, and I will build this up probably two or three levels. And that's all for the hopes of trying to speed up this farm and get a little more yield out of it so I can trade for more and more emeralds. So I've gone ahead and let this run for about two hours. And what I've gotten is just about two and a half stacks of carrots per hour. Uh, somewhere between probably two and two and a half stacks is what you can realistically expect out of this uh, farm. Uh, I've also went ahead and built up a potato farm right next to it while I was waiting for this to run. I just kind of wanted to see what I'd get from that. Uh, the one thing I noticed is potato farm, the potato farm took a lot longer to get going. And I really don't know how many it's going to produce uh, per hour uh, yet. Uh, with this, uh, even though two and a half stacks of carrots isn't a whole lot, it is pretty much a build it and forget it type of model. So as long as these villages keep working, this will be a continually passive farm. And once I get probably two more layers of this built, I will be getting the carrots I need for training along with the potatoes I need for trading pretty consistently. So I think it'll work out well for me. Uh, the version that I built this in is 14.3. Uh, uh, so it does appear to be stable and I don't uh, have any uh, issues with the villagers as of yet. So thank you for being here today with me. This is Ephemeris. Thank you and see you later.